Hello again, uh, greetings from me to the entire uh, audience uh, who will be attending and uh, listening uh, to today's lectures in today's uh, session, um, 5A, Automation, Robotics and Control. Um, let me all of first to introduce myself. Self. Uh, I am Marian Golob, uh, Associate Professor at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, Computer Science and Informatics uh, on University of Maribor in Slovenia. Uh, my teaching uh, and research interests uh, uh, are industrial automation, uh, distributed control systems, uh, and also machine learning and in intelligent uh, methods, uh, control methods. So today, uh, in these sections, uh, we will follow the presentation of uh, five interesting papers. Uh, there will be a first presentation from China, a second uh, two presentations from Serbia, one from Turkey, and one from Slovakia. Uh, so in advance, uh, uh, please forgive me uh, for um, possible uh, mispronunciations of names and uh, surnames because uh, some of names are difficult to to, uh, to read. Um, we have 90 minutes uh, for this session uh, for five papers. So uh, this means that each presenter uh, will have a maximum 18 minutes for uh, presentations, including uh, with time to answer the questions. Um, so after 18 minutes, I will um, I will stop the presentation. So, okay, let me start with the first presentation uh, with title uh, Discriminating Feed Rate of Combined uh, Harvester by Using Association Rule Mining. Uh, presenter will be uh, Ms. Yeong Liu from China. And- uh, Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, you are here and uh, you can, um, share your screen and uh, start okay. the presentation. Okay, thank you, thank okay. you very much. Okay. Thank you. Uh, could you see my slide? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, uh, perfect. Okay, uh, good afternoon, every teacher. I'm Liu Yehong, a PhD student from China Agricultural University, and I'm very glad to give a presentation here. The title of my presentation is Discriminating Federate of Combined Harvester by Using Association Rules Mining. The contents of my presentation are so on this slide, which include four parts, introduction, association rules, mining implementation, uh, performance of the constructed classifier, and the conclusion. And this is the first part, introduction. The widespread utilization of combined harvesters has significantly ele elevated the labor intensity for farmers during crop harvesting, consequently enhancing their economic profit badly. Uh, the federated weight denotes the quantity of crops pro, uh, crops processed by combined harvester within a given time is the most important parameter for assessing its op operational capability. Uh, however, in practical harvesting process, the actual federated may may divide from the rated federated due to factors like uh, imbalanced crop density and uneven field terrain. Extensive federate can lead to critical rotating complement of combined harvester getting blockage. As so in this figure, uh, featuring this figure featuring a blockade starting cylinder. Moreover, when the federate surpasses the machine capability, uh, the, the combined harvester fails to process the abundant crops in a timely manner, resulting, resulting in increase in loss rate. So it's essential to assess the state of federate. Uh, to discern the federate, we propose a method based on association rules mining. Uh, ARM is one of active research methods in data mining, which was first which is first proposed by Agrivo. Uh, 
<clears throat> ARM technology not only automatically mines the relationship between two things, but also presents their relationship as a rule to better reflect the internal mechanism of things. Initially, its purpose was to discover the relationship between different commodities in transaction database. Association rules reflect the independence and the co correlation between one thing and other things, which can be regarded as an if then relationship. By observing the transaction set of a fruit store like this, as so in the figure, an interesting, an interesting trend emerges. The groups and the strawberries are consistently purchased together. Recognizing this value correlation, the fruit store can optimize its layout by placing the group display editor adjacent to the strawberry section, thereby capitalizing on this purchasing pattern to drive up their sales. The current combination of groups and strawberries can be regarded as a strategic role or pattern that can significantly impact the store's performance. The ARM methodology, uh, methodology driven by this metric uh, approach not only uncovers intricate future uh, relationships from the data set, but also offers a considerable level of interpretability in the forms of rules. This is precisely why we have adopted ARM as our, <clears throat> as our, uh, 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 this is precisely why we have adopted ARM as our children research methodology. <clears throat> it enables us to answer and uh, articulate the relationships between federate and the diverse state of complex components through real build experiences, significantly enhancing comprehensibility. Uh, our research uh, can be divided into three main parts. Firstly, during the pre-processing stage, we focused on this discretizing the time series data we collected. This transformation allows us to convert the wrong sequence into a uh, transaction sheet, which, uh, which are essential for if effective implementation of association rules algorithm. Uh, after <clears throat> after pre-processing, both the original train set and the test set are turned into form of transaction set to facilitate the mining of association rules in data sets and in process of mining, in order to quickly obtain all association rules, we choose FP growth in addition in order to reduce the number of mined rules. Three indicators of spot confidence and lift were used to filter the mild rules. And this section will dive into the comprehensive presentation of our research uh, encompassing three main components. To begin with, we will introduce the data collection process under various federates. The figure shows the money, uh, monitored locations and the parameters. Uh, specifically, we have implied a combined harvester with a uh, de designated federate of six kilograms per second. Our monitoring system encompasses 10 uh, important rotating components, state parameters comprising three torque values and seven rotational speeds. Through the pretest, the federate was divided into three levels, and the state of combined harvesters and the different federate is so in, the, in this table uh, to achieve an increase in federate. Three acceleration rules were established within the data acquisition error. In the first acceleration room, the combined harvester accelerates from four kilometer per hour to six kilometer per hour. Uh, federate will <clears throat> from six kilometers kilogram per second to eight kilogram per second, then the accelerator from six kilometer per hour to eight kilometer per hour. And in the last room, the acceleration process from eight kilometer per hour to 10 kilometer per hour is completed. Following the pre-processing steps to handle outliers and missing values in the collected data, we utilize the PA method to discretize the, the time series. Uh, this transformation was carried out to convert the acquired time series state into transaction states, facilitating the execution of association rules mining algorithms. Uh, after discretizing the obtained discrete, discrete values are then normalized and classified into four levels uh, based on the magnitude of the values from small and uh, from small to large 
from small to large, um, recorded and L1, L2, L3, and L4. After the PA con conversation, the final content format of obtained the transaction set is so in so in this table. Within the table three, we present a glyph size of transformed transactions that each transaction comprise comprises many items and each item comprises two, the each item comprises two uh, components, so the name and the, its associated and its associated uh, level. Uh, taking the first entry, like this, taking the first entry uh, as an illustration when the federate is at level one, uh, the, the stock angular speed corresponds to level four, the torque level is at level two, and the converse speed is at level four with the corresponding torque level of two. Uh, this sequence continues in a similar fashion for subsequent transactions. The process of mining rules aims to identify frequent combinations between federated items and other monitor, uh, monitored parameter stage. Once the transaction data set is prepared, we utilize the FP growth algorithm for row mining. Uh, however, diving into the specific implementation details of this algorithm involves computer algorithm knowledge, which will not be covered extensively here. And uh, the rules generated from this approach often encompass a considerable amount of redundancy. Hence, uh, we applied the three evaluation metrics to filter these rules and extend strong association rules that saw the most uh, tightly related item scenes. These three metrics include sport, confidence, and lift. After, consider, uh, after conducting the preliminary mining process, we unearthed a total of 515 association rules when the fill rate was in range of six to eight kilograms per second. Similarly, 503 association rules were discovered for fill rates between eight to 10 kilograms per second and 583 rules were mined for fill rate ranging from 10 to 11 kilograms per second. Uh, subsequently, by configuring the threshold values from three metrics and point three, point eight, and three, respectively, we drive the uh, 14, 16, and 42 strong associ association rules from the three federated conditions. Subsequently, we employed these strong association rules to build the classifiers, uh, employing them as a classification uh, uh, criteria. And in this section, we discuss the performance of the construct classifier. Here, we demonstrate the process of utilizing the MIDA rules to construct classifiers and describe how these classifiers function. For example, in test, this is the test, uh, test stand. Uh, in, the, in a test transaction stand comprising uh, transactions exclusively within the federate range of six to eight kilograms per second, wow. each transaction within the test stand was continually comp uh, compared to the rows with, within the classifier as depicted in the figure upon inputting the transaction from the test item set into classifier, an ongoing comparison process ensured. Consequently, the classifier uh, class, uh, the classification process confirmed that the transaction within the test set corresponded to the fit rate of six to, six to eight kil, kilogram per second. And it can be seen that the construct classifier has reached 100%, 96%, and 98.7% correct discrimination rates for the three levels of feeder rates. Respectively, uh, it indicates that the method of using strong association rules can effectively dis discriminate the state of feeder rates. And then lastly, we present a brief, brief summary of conclusions derived from our research highlighting the following four points, uh, proposal, proposal of an ARM-based method for monitoring combined harvest operation by discriminating federate, uh, utilization of torque speed and simulated federate data during field tests to obtain information on working states, improvement in mining efficiency through the use of PAA for 
dimensionality reduction and the enhanced FP growth algorithm for real ex uh, extraction wrought in accurate dis discrimination of federated state. Future plans, future plans involve integrating op optimization algorithms for future efficiency improvement. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for your nice presentation. Uh, uh, does anybody in the audience have uh, questions for author of this paper? Uh, what is the uh, support confidence lift mini? Uh, the support is uh, like this. I want to tell you like this. Maybe maybe you can see this this uh, slide. The sport is used to uh, measure the frequency of items. Confidence indicates the uh, probability of occurrence of item B with when the when item A occurs, which can be regarded as a conditional probability. The definition of lift is so in this uh, this equation, which reflects the correlation between A and uh, B. When lift greater greater than one and higher, it means the positive correlation between the two items is high. And uh, when lift is lower than one uh, and lower means the correlation between the two items is low. When the lift equals to one means that two items are independent of, of each other. Okay, that's the three indicators means. Thank you for your question. Okay, thank you very much for answer. Um, maybe once more a question if, if somebody wants uh, to ask something. No, okay, no. Then thank you very much for your presentation and answering questions. And we will continue with the next paper. Uh, next paper will be presented um, by uh, author Sasha. Uh, Sasha Sinisha Nikolic from Serbia. Please, um, Mr. Nikolic, uh, you can start with your presentation. Uh, the title of the presentation is Identification of Nonlinear Systems Using the Hammerstein Wiener uh, Model with Improved Orthogonal Functions. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh, dear colleagues, dear Professor Golub, uh, good afternoon. I am Sasha Nikulic and I work at Penaris Technisch Faculty of Point Engineering as Associate Professor at the Department of Quantum Systems. Sasha, I, Sasha, we don't see your presentation. Okay, just a moment. You must share the... No. Uh, no. Uh, maybe... Uh, okay. ah, now, now it's better, yes, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, today, I will present our paper with uh, the type of unification of nominal systems using the Hammerstein binary model with improved optimal functions. Authors by Sasha Nikolic, Nelson Milanovic, Nikola Dankovic, Darko Mitic, Stanek Shafterich, Angela Zilic, and Peter, Peter uh, Jekic. Uh, this paper presents a new structure which is, consists of the basic structure of, of Hammerstein binary models. With improved bottle of function with uh, of months of genre factors. It presents uh, an extension of generalized matrix functions for polynomials, which represents months polynomials. Also, a bit of mathematical background for uh, performing improved almost optimal polynomials in combination with the Hamilton Vanel models is proposed in this, in this article. The proposed approach is used for the identification of strong nominal heroic systems. Uh, described by transfer, transfer functions. On the other hand, Hammerstein binary model structure is formed of two nonlinear, of two uh, blocks. Uh, then one uh, box is a linear model, and one box is uh, uh, or two blocks of nonlinear, nonlinear block. The structure combines Hammerstein Fig one uh, A and binary model Fig one B. Hammerstein model is described using input on linearity followed by a linear system model. In contrast, uh, the binary models consist of linear block followed by output nonlinearity. 
depending on the specific case, this model can be combined and Hammerstein binary model or binary Hammerstein, uh, Hammerstein model. The Hammerstein binary model structure is presented on a one C figure, and uh, the binary Hammerstein structure is presented in a uh, figure one one B. On the other hand, improved almost all kernel functions uh, can be described by this uh, rational transfer function. And transfer, uh, transfer function had been the following following form. Uh, the sequence of means, uh, marks of uh, rational function is used in this application in the following, in the following form. Uh, when it comes to uh, means or genre of the polynomials, we have an situation. These polynomials represents a combination of improved forms and polynomials of classical means of genre type. This uh, equation. First member of uh, uh, proposed sequence polynomials given in the following in the following equation. Now, if we are finding substitution in the previous expression, the preferred function for Hammerstein binary models are obtained in the form. Uh, we can see on this on this slide. In order to apply new improved almost mass genre optimal functions in combination with Hammerstein binary models, we use a multi tank system hydraulic shown in this picture uh, from Inteco in, in F4. The multi tank system consists of three separate tanks fitted with them uh, bells. We can see on this each. The first tank uh, has a constant cross section, a constant cross section, whereas the second, the third, spherical and conical, and has a variable cross section. This future introduces the main nonlinearities into the basic system. Each tank is equipped with a level sensor based on hydraulic pressure measurements. Finally, a speed pump is variable and used to fill the upper tank with the custom uh, cross section. The multi-tank system can be described using the nonlinear non -linear system equation. In order to evaluate the attention to propose a Hamish binary structure with improved almost optimal function of means of genre fact, we conclude experiments with a given multi-tank system. First, the input output data set has been found using the model on the multi-tank system given by previous equation. The data set used for this purpose is shown in figure seven, this picture, and we consider a proposed method with the Hammerstein uh, binary structure with optimal functions described by the uh, previous equation and there is for delta x1.0 point. In order to demonstrate the effectiveness of the proposed method, various combinations of function f1 and f2 are prepared. In the first example, the following functions for input nonlinearity f1 and output nonlinearity f2 are presented on this slide. The results uh, show the proposed Hammerstein uh, binary structure with input nonlinearity and output nonlinearity can catch the multi system detail of it. Uh, actually of 99.32% uh, at this at this pitch. In order to demonstrate uh, the effectiveness of proposal method, the experiments that repeat with well known optimal polynomials. We use generalized quasi optimal polynomials of the K equal one of the genre type of the genre type this. Chebyshev polynomials of the second kind, Chebyshev polynomials of second kind, this, Laguerre polynomials, and a summarization of the all of the results and given at this, at this table. Now, uh, these uh, results obtained by the Lopez method using the uh, improved almost optimal means of genre polynomials in the Kanesh Devanon model have been compared with. Uh, well known obtained by the iterative least square and recursive square method, this, and the method of genetic algorithms combined with the recursive least square method and method for estimating the parameters of the Hammerstein nonlinear model using a multi-similar uh, approach. 
uh, this result shown in this in this pitch. The advantage of the proposed method in this paper compared uh, to the other is that the implementation of Hammerstein model with author of almost polynomials requires much less complex mathematical background and mathematical mathematical tools. Now, uh, some conclusions or remarks. Uh, this paper considers the application of new grid derived in two bonus optimal polynomials for the representation of non linearities of the Hammerstein binary model of systems. The aim of this paper was to derive a new type of input bonus in the genre, i.e., multi polynomials, based on the building of the summation, which can be used for the derivation of the all type classical, classical polynomials or functions. A model unification method for the non linear hypothesis also discussed in detail in this article. From a technical aspect, both non linearities functions in Hammerstein Weiner model are replaced with improved almost functions and classical polynomials. On the other hand, their combinations are used to improve the actuary of the proposed method for unifying numerous engineering applications. In future work, we will consider the possibility of using deep learning techniques and optical endocrine neural networks together with the improved Hammerstein Weiner structure proposal can be also in this in this paper. Thank you for attention. Uh, thank you very much, very much for your presentation. Uh, please, the questions from the audience. I, if somebody have a question, uh, just ask. Okay. okay, there is no questions. I see no hands. Uh, okay, I will ask you something. Uh, so, um, this uh, Wiener Hammerstein uh, or Hammerstein Wiener uh, model, okay. uh, which you used, um, how you do the identification online or not online? Um, did, did you use a recursive method or non recursive method for uh, identification? No, no, no. Non, non recursive method. Yes, in, in this case. Yes. In this case. Yes. And how can you adapt this to the recursive method? Uh, in this recursive method, uh, just a moment. Recursive method. Uh, this uh, uh, recursive least square method. Mm -hmm. um, recursive least square method. You can use probably, right? Yes, yes, yes. For yes. parameter estimation. Yes, uh, yes. with with uh, with um, uh, general algorithms. Okay, but recursive least square method is. Um, um, have good results if the system is uh, linear by, by parameters. Uh, uh, so, uh, okay. so in your um, when you use these polynomials, uh, I think uh, this is not the case. Eh? So yes. maybe you will have some problems with a recursive yeah. least yes, square method. Yes, yes. Uh, before uh, we use the recursive method, uh, we first the uh, linearization of uh, this. Uh... Aha, okay. Oh, now I understand. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for you, uh, for presentation and for que uh, answering the questions. Uh, so, is if there is uh, no more question, uh, we can continue with the third paper in our section. The third paper uh, with title uh, "Robust uh, Consensus-Based uh, Formation Control of a Group of uh, UAA UAV." Um, will be present by um, Mr. Uh, Kim Khan from Turkey. Plus, Mr. Khan, uh, you can start with your presentation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Khan Jan. I am a PhD student at uh, Atatürk University, Department of Electric and Electronics Engineering, uh, Turkey. Today, I am going to talk about my uh, study, which is titled as Robust Consensus Based Formation Control of a Group of Unmanned Area Vehicles. Uh, here is the outline of my uh, study. First of all, I will give the motivation and the aim of my study, and then I will talk about the theoretical background of methods and uh, the materials which is used uh, in my study in our real time tests. 
and then I will uh, present the, uh, the achieved experimental results, and then I will finish my presentation uh, giving my references. And uh, the motivation of in the study, we want to design a robust consensus based formation control uh, to, re to realize a predefined formation shapes uh, with a team of unmanned aerial vehicles. Uh, in order to realize these formations, we first we define the double integrator dynamics of an enemy uh, uh, UAV, which is used in this study. Then uh, the proposed uh, consen robust consensus based formation control algorithm uh, has been derived and the stability analysis has been proven via algebraic stability. Uh, by using both the uh, lift stability theorem. Uh, after that, uh, the uh, effectiveness of the proposed control has been tested in real time auto tests uh, with four uh, UAVs. Uh, methods and materials uh, for to define uh, the mathematical, mathematical model of an UAV. Uh, we have to uh, we have to determine which kind of UAV uh, we will use in this experiment. We have used X-type uh, UAV. Also, it has uh, four uh, quad rotors. So uh, after that, uh, I will uh, we I will call our UAV as quad rotor. After that, uh, if we want to control a quadrotor uh, in a formation or a single use test. Uh, we want to divide its dynamic structure into two uh, subsystems uh, described as inner loop and uh, inner loop and outer loop uh, control. Uh, for uh, inner loop control, the output uh, control is realized. The other, when we control the other loop, the uh, output control is realized uh, for quadrupler tests. Uh, here, uh, a, a UAV uh, has six degree of freedom and its mathematical expressions can be seen in uh, equation one. The, First uh, three rows represents the outer loop control equations, and the last three rows represents the uh, attitude control, and also known as uh, earlier in, uh, angle angel, uh, angle uh, control uh, equations. Uh, for realizing formation control, we uh, we want to produce our control signal in order to control the position of the, our uh, quadrotors. So we uh, we want to send uh, U1, which is represents the control signal of the uh, A and UAV. So uh, if we wish the control to generate a control signal uh, for uh, formation flies, the other loop dynamics of all swarm members is controlled uh, in order to in order to obtain a uh, formation, good formation shape. So uh, we want to define this dynamics, which is given in equation two here. Uh, X, repre X represents the position of UAVI, uh, and V represents the linear velocity of UAVI, and U, uh, UI represents the uh, control signal of uh, UAVI. So we can we call these equations uh, as uh, double integrated dynamics of and uh, UAV. So uh, we determine our uh, dynamics to realize position control of uh, UAVs. After that, we can uh, design consensus based formation control. Uh, to realize this, we consider a, a linear system, which is given in equation three. Here A and B are both stabilizable matrices. Uh, besides, the basic consensus algorithm uh, known in the literature can be given uh, in equation four. Here K uh, represents the consensus uh, formation control gain. Uh, 
Uh, here, xi and minus xj uh, represents the uh, neighborhood of uh, all uh, UAVs in the solar system. Uh, is uh, by using equation T for uh, top in the control system, UT can be uh, described as UT uh, equals to minus KX T. Uh, can be obtained in this equation for our uh, for for our system we have to define all equations in a matrix form so we can rewrite the equation three uh, as the chronicle protocol of the system which is given in equation five uh, here the control signal can be rewritten as uh, ut equals to minus L chronicle product key times XT. Here, uh, L represents the Laplace matrix, and uh, which is obtained based on the neighborhood of the uh, whole system for a formation control. And to obtain the close of expression of the whole system by using this Laplace matrix, we can. Uh, we can re rewrite the equation five, which is given as in equation uh, six. Uh, as we know, the base, uh, basic differential equation expression, we can obtain its solutions, which is given in equation seven. After that, we uh, want to uh, we want to open all these equations uh, to obtain more clear and uh, robust uh, control signal uh, we can uh, we can uh, have, we have to define it more clearly so the expression x0 denotes the initial sets of the vehicles in the swarm system uh, the exponential uh, if the exponential expression given in 7 can be rewritten as in equation 8 uh, from equation 8 we can uh, use the Jordan Carnival form, which is defined as G equals to P to the power minus one, LP equals to diagonal zero, uh, lambda two, uh, lambda two, lambda three, two, lambda n. Here, lambda two represents the smallest eigenvalue of uh, G matrix and also. Uh, P must be greater than zero, and also it is a symmetric matrix and it contains the eigen vectors. The exponential expression uh, given in eight can be rearranged with the help of the Kronecker product, which is can be rewritten as in equation nine. After that, uh, we can rewrite the equation nine uh, more simply, uh, which is given in equation. 10. Here, uh, by using some uh, properties of P, uh, such as P to the power minus one chronic product uh, unitary matrix equals to P chronic product I to the power minus one, and also the exponential expression property of the, this exponential expression, the equation 11 can be written more clearly. So uh, the system given in, in previously in equation six has an undirected and connected feather structure. Uh, and also since the elements of matrix A are fixed uh, and uh, their eigenvalues are constant as well. And therefore consensus design should be achieved with the design of uh, the game key. We cannot change all the uh, elements of the matrix because they are all constant so we have to design uh, the k uh, game key so in order to design the consensus control uh, we have the categorization the appropriate k gain can be chosen as in, in equation uh, 12 by using p a plus a times p minus lambda two P B B transpose P plus Q equals to zero, uh, and here A and B is stabilizable, and uh, Q and P must be greater than zero. 
uh, we can see that the uh, key can, if we take the key uh, given in equation 12, our uh, consensus-based formation control uh, will be robust. How we know that? Uh, we have some lemma. In lemma one, if all eigenvalues of matrix A are negative real parts, the relationship between A and P matrix can be written as P A plus uh, A transpose B uh, smaller than zero. From all these steps, lemma one and recap equation yield the following equation. From equation 12, we can see that Q and P B transpose B P R are all constant. So uh, the uh, the necessary formation must be satisfied, satisfied uh, by using lambda 2 minus lambda n. How we can achieve this uh, stability? Uh, the lambda 2 must be smaller than lambda n. So after that, uh, in the light of the, uh, in all this information, the proposed robust consensus-based formation control structure for each UAV uh, using this one can be obtained by using uh, in the equation uh, uh, 14. Here, uh, key, we achieved the previous equation. Uh, a, I, G represents the adjacency matrix of all system. Uh, this uh, defines all the neighborhood of the system. And after that, we are obtained the Laplace matrix of the system as well. And uh, beta represents the position control to gain. And we determine in this study trial and error uh, method. And also, uh, here, xi and minus xj represents the uh, neighbor uh, uh, UAVs in this one. And also, we have uh, an, another uh, parameter here, delta ig. Delta ig represents the desired, desired formation distance between two neighbor uh, UAVs in this one. So, considering this equality in the proposed consensus equation for all initial uh, position and uh, their linear velocity of each wave is. If uh, T goes infinity, then uh, the norm of Xi minus Xj uh, must be goes to delta I. After that, we are achieving the desired formation uh, as well. So, uh, the previous equation, which is given an equation of 15, uh, 14, uh, we are taking into account the position of the UAVs while realizing the formation control. And to realize more precise formation uh, shapes in, in real time, we also take, in, take into account the linear velocities of the UAVs, which is given as equation uh, 15, uh, where here uh, gamma equals to one, we didn't uh, design this equation. And also, uh, this equation also represents the consensus uh, based formation control equation. Uh, the difference, the previous uh, equation, uh, which is in uh, 14. Uh, we use the linear velocities of the UAVs here, we can see. After that, uh, the, our consensus condition in, uh, within the storm is complete and satisfied. Also, uh, while realizing in uh, real-time formation flight or in simulation studies, we have to use uh, collision audience algorithm in order to avoid any collision between uh, UAVs in the solar. So we have used the repellent Morse potential methodology, uh, which is given in equation 16. Here, uh, uh, alpha uh, must be bigger than zero, which is the control gain, and n represents, must be bigger than the zero, represents the exponential scale. 
And uh, RIG represents the measured distance between uh, UAVs, and RS is the desired safety distance between UAVs, respectively. Uh, for this study, the total control signal uh, is the sum of the all previous control signals, which is given in equation 17. Here, uh, UFP represents the position, uh, formation control based on position of the UAVs, and uh, UFY uh, represents the, uh, also, as well as uh, the uh, formation control of the UAVs based on the linear velocity of uh, agents and URG uh, R represents the uh, collision avoidance control signal. Uh, the experimental results. Uh, the experimental results, uh, while of, uh, presenting the experimental results, we uh, we use A matrix and B matrix, which is taken as uh, given in the presentation. And also we, while realizing this theory uh, and obtaining the key parameter, we solve all these equations by using the LMI toolbox of MATLAB. And the key and P matrices are obtained as given in the uh, presentation. Uh, here, in figure one, uh, the experimental setup using this one are given. Here, one represents the ground control station, two represents the router, realized communication between all the agents, and from three to uh, six, the represents the uh, UAV, which is used in this experiment. And they are all open source system and designed and configured by uh, me. And here the uh, experimental equipment list and uh, and their uh, IP numbers we can see from the clear from the table. Uh, in Figure Two, uh, the uh, predefined formation shapes uh, using the formation collides. Uh, the first one is the triangular base. Uh, triangle shape formation. Uh, the distance, uh, the desired distance, uh, which is given described in the formation control delta IG. Uh, here we can see all the distance delta IG from the figure. Uh, the second one is the rhombus shape, and the third one is the line shape formations. Uh, we can check the experimental results. Uh, in uh, for the first one, in Figure Three A, it represents the distance information between waves during the triangular shape formation flight. Uh, here we can check any distance in re from the real time uh, test results. For example, UAV two minus UAV four. Uh, UAV two minus UAV four must be. 10 here, I think it's nearly 10, yes. We can all see the distance between the waves. And based on this distance information, we have to check also the errors while realizing the, the, this uh, triangular shape formation. Here we can see all the distance error while realizing these formations. And here is the a triangular shape formation flight image while realizing the real time phase out of tests. Here is the UAV1, UAV2, UAV3, UAV4. Here is the nearly triangular shape. And also, uh, the for the second one formation flight, uh, we have realized one shape formation. And also, uh, we can see uh, the first uh, one, the figure 4A. All, uh, the distance information between UAVs uh, while realizing on the formation flight, and also again the second one, uh, the error base, the errors uh, while realizing uh, these formation shapes. Uh, we can also see the any distance and errors from the figures. It's more clear. Uh, here is the uh, Rome cell formation flight uh, while realizing uh, auto test again. 
And the third one, all the, the last one, uh, it's a line shape formation. Also, again, we can see the distance and the distance error. And also, we can call it a formation errors between waves while realizing this formation. And also, uh, we can see the line shape formation in real time out of tests. Uh, to complete, uh, in this paper, uh, we want to design a robust uh, consensus based formation control and we want to validate it, uh, validate this control algorithm in our in real time out of tests. The experimental results show that the UAVs are able to realize predefined formation shapes very well, despite the measurement errors, uh, nearly plus minus 50 uh, centimeters caused by GPS uh, in terms of the proposed uh, control algorithm. In our study, we used uh, not uh, very high sensitivity, sensitivity, sensitive uh, GPS. Uh, we want to design this uh, experimental setup uh, uh, by taking into account low costs. We want to design them uh, low cost system. So we have these uh, measurement errors uh, caused by GPS. Here are my references. Thanks for your attention. I can take any question. Well, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, please, the questions. I have one. OK, please. Okay. Uh, I I didn't follow the whole uh, uh, presentation. I, I must say I'm not an expert in this field, <laughs> nor nearby. But uh, I'm just wondering: Did, did you, uh, for the communication between nodes, uh, what? How did you establish that? And uh, did you maybe heard about robot operating system? Uh, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Did you finish? Yep. Ah, okay. Uh, 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 for our system, we use socket programming uh, to communicate uh, the ground control station and the UAVs and by realizing the R formation flight. And we also can realize these experiments uh, for real time by using ROS, uh, which is known as robot operating system, but I didn't use it. Uh, socket programming is more something more clear, I think. And then the uh, uh, robot operating system. And another reason is the robot operating system needs more, um, more better uh, computer. Um, for example, you need more RAM or more uh, faster uh, processor, microprocessor. And uh, our uh, laptop isn't, uh, didn't have this uh, properties. So I, I choose uh, this uh, the, the socket programming. Makes sense. Thank you. You are welcome. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Do uh, anybody have uh, more questions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I, I I will have one question. Um, okay, can sorry. you explain me? Hmm. What was the uh, sample time by this uh, experiment, control system experiment? Uh, it depends our uh, writing for Python Ubuntu system and our for our system by realizing this. I think it was uh, I, uh, zero point zero point five or zero, uh, for our. Sending data and get back in the GPS data uh, to communicate our ground control station and between UAVs. In uh, for their uh, single sampling data, I think it's, it depends on our Raspberry Pi's uh, performance. Okay. Thank you very much for your answers. You are welcome. Um, now we are continuing with next uh, presentation of the paper, uh, documentation as code in auto 
Automotive System uh, Software Indirect. Um, the presenter will be uh, Mr. Momčilo Krunic from Serbia. And um, please, Mr. Krunic, you can start with your presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, introduction. Let me briefly present myself. My name is, as you mentioned already, Momčilo Krunic, and I am coming from Serbia, where I teach students about. Uh, I'm assistant professor at the University, of, Technical University of Novi Sad, where I teach students about automotive software development processes. I'm also engaged in the industry, in automotive industry, more particularly as a software architect. And this paper presents the outcome of the one and a half year of work uh, that where we deal dealt with the real OAM customer. So this is a part of engineering that many of us doesn't didn't like, I, I would say in my case, that much, uh, where you need to, you know, put on the paper what you did, how one could use it, and and so on and so forth. So in order to make it more um, uh, attractive, uh, uh, we have designed a system uh, that encourages the development, feature development teams to actually do the diligent uh, work of writing documentation during the development software development life cycle and i will try briefly to present in this paper uh, some of the co concepts that uh, we have implemented uh, in the industry so in this presentation first i will do a brief introduction then overview uh, uh, of some of some terms that we used in this paper, then briefly about the processes uh, there that has been uh, used. Also, tools we used for implementing this approach, and then a few words about the case study. Uh, actually, about this collaboration, uh, we as a tier one software supplier and OAM as a big company for which we delivered the software and uh, documentation alongside. And afterwards, I will present some results and measurements, how we measured our, our, uh, and what measures we need, one need to take when uh, optimizing processes and tools in order to make it more lean and at the end, I will briefly conclude. So the automotive industry faces really historical change as we speak in the last decade, uh, particularly. So there are huge increase in demands for quality and efficiency in software development. So automotive industry went or now it's, it's steering from the classical engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering industry uh, that combines all those uh, engineering practices into one. Now the software is becoming the really significant part of this process. And the software development in particular is quite some different in many aspects than traditional uh, engineering. So, that being said, uh, there, there should be some mind shift how some things are done. So the one thing is that if we want to write some code that has certain quality and we want to deliver it alongside with documentation, then we need to treat documentation as a first class citizen in development process. Otherwise, documentation will tend to obsolete on a daily basis. Also, one of the demands uh, that is quite common in automotive industry is uh, mandatory ACE by standard. So where OAM, so big car companies, are using this standard to, uh, to measure, let's say, the processes uh, in their suppliers. So they need to 
reach a certain level of quality. So they that they do a diligence, and I will show uh, uh, what I mean by that. And uh, this research, you can say, represents an outcome of one year documentation as code case study on the commercial project. So documentation as code is a holistic approach, uh, how to document technical information. Uh, it's actually an art how uh, one, how to, to document computer programs. And that uh, has evolved significantly over the past few years. It's a, it's a tricky part because you, documentation tends, as I said, to obsolete if it's not treated as equal as software. And, uh, you want to have a high quality of software as a, and, and the high quality of your software cannot be detached from the, the, the quality measurement of your documentation as well as your tests. So all that when, when one take into account is can be then um, tagged as a software quality. And in order to utilize and to perform this approach, you need to use what you already have. So you want to use, you want that your feature development teams are using the same software development environment when they are also updating documentation. So they don't, they, you don't want that one need to change the context. So to change some tools, to go on some web space or, or whatever. So to, uh, to change, the, let's say, Visual Studio Code environment with something else in order to document what one did uh, with the software code. So therefore, in order to optimize the context switch, uh, we consider that we need to narrow down the, this gap by making uh, documentation distributed alongside the code on the Git repository, and then using some, uh, let's say, uh, text-based markup languages to do the actual content, and then do some micro-tooling and, and some already existing tools for building the, the static site for that documentation can be used in order to wrap up the process. And also, this, this is aligned with the DevOps principles that allows for swift problem identification and resolution, meaning that uh, if one introduces some broken link into documentation or miss some critical information to, 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 to put into the documentation, then documentation uh, CI CD pipeline will reject su such a, a merge request. Processes uh, that uh, we were, let's say, that were mandatory, okay, not mandatory. The first one was mandatory, uh, so mandatory by contract with the OAM that we fulfill software process uh, improvement and capability determination automotive flavor of the standard. Uh, in order, we, need, we were supposed to reach the level two of this standard. And in order to reach that, we introduced something called behavior-driven development and test-driven development as software uh, development practice, modern software development uh, engineering practices in order to, uh, to uh, reach the high level of ASPICE, but also to be, let's say, um, on the cutting edge of software development practices. And how we achieve that is by introducing something called micro V model iterations, which can be identified on these. So these two pictures actually represents the essence of this research. On the left side, it's a classic ASPICE approach introduced a decades ago uh, in automotive industry. And this is the core process groups. There are many other groups around this engineering, but this one is core. And this one it was our focus, actually the, 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 the bottom part. 
so software engineering process group, but we also had a strong connection with the upper level and the upper level is actually coming from the OEM, so from the big car company. And then you take those requirements and iterate here in order to deliver something, some value to the customer. And you iterate here through so-called micro V uh, iterations using behavior driven development practices and test driven development practices on the smaller scale. So on the uh, behavior driven development process says you need to write a scenario that represents some uh, story that you have uh, talked with the customer and that customer would like to execute. And by defining such a story, user story, you define a scenario that can validate this uh, user story. And at the beginning, you have, of course, failing scenario because there is no code, but you first write, write your scenario. And that can be used then as an acceptance test. And this is also called sometimes acceptance test, uh, acceptance test driven development. But on the smaller scale, you do the similar kind of iterations, but this is here. So you first write your test that is failing because there is no implementation, but then you write your implementation just sufficient to make your test green. And then once it's green, you refactor your code, uh, you remove the du duplication and whatsoever and, and make it clean. And at the end of this process, you need to deliver something to a customer and these iterations should be no more than a sprint. So when, when we are talking about uh, agile software development practices, so one sprint might vary from one week to three weeks. And in order to deliver something meaningful here, it's not only about delivering the functionality, but also all other artifacts related to that fun functionality. Otherwise it will be useful uh, it would be useless for, for the customer. So the tools that we have used for accomplishing these iterations, as I mentioned, one of them, one, one of the most important, I would say here is a version control system, Git. We use Git, there are many others, but Git was the, our uh, choice since it's a, let's say, state of the art in this kind of, functionality and quite common in software development. So what we did and also what we considered is that if we are, if the Git is good enough to version our source code, why it shouldn't be good enough to version our documentation alongside the code and our test results all packed into one Git tag, let's say that you release to your customer and then the customer, re customer receives a bundle that contains everything, functionality, test results, architecture, and all documentation artifacts. And in, or in order to achieve that, we used something called Sphinx. So Sphinx is a tool. For example, Linux is using Sphinx and many others. What, what we already mentioned, for example, Ross is using Sphinx to build their own uh, HTML a static site that represents the documentation. It's quite common and, and neat approach because you get the search box and where you can find all relevant artifacts by, for example, taking just one requirement ID and, and do the search and all relevant artifacts will pop up if you did your process properly. Also, other than these, we use Jira as an application lifecycle management tool that was mapped one-to-one -to, -one to our uh, documentation artifacts. But we also used uh, a tool called Windshield that was used only for the customer requirements exchange process because uh, it contains uh, something called RACIF format exchanger that can uh, be used to exchange requirements with the customer, which is quite, quite common approach uh, in the automotive industry because you receive a, a thousands of requirements and, and there should be uh, some kind of a process. 
So our, our language of choice to write our documentation was Markdown simply because uh, there is no, there is no, let's say, uh, complex syntax. It's like, it's quite lean and you can start writing it immediately. And there are a number of tools, tools for rendering and uh, supporting this approach. And it's quite common in open source community as well. Other than this, we used, we also developed some micro tools uh, to support verification and validation of our uh, process steps uh, that I will show a bit later. So in this case study, this diagram represents all known artifacts that we have have to generate or write it down during software development processes. So when you want to release one micro V sprint uh, delivery, then you need to have all these artifacts alongside the source code in order to fill, fulfill a spice approach. So on the software level, on the architectural level and on the unit level, you have a number of artifacts that are created. Now you can see here in the legend, either using the markdown as a language of choice for writing documentation, or it's simply a source code and we are generating some stuff from the source code as well. And as I said, a windshield on top, just as an interface with towards the customer. So on each micro V iteration cycle uh, and on each pull request commit and creation, uh, there is a Jenkins pipeline that verifies this commit uh, that, you, as I said, you didn't introduce the plan broken plant UML diagram or uh, something like that. Some broken links as well. And, uh, also some other steps. And this verification process ensures that your documentation is always up to date and it is always in consistent shape with the code, which is also one of the requirements coming from the ASPICE. So requirements as code, this means what I mentioned before in behavior driven development you have your you are defining your acceptance tests or scenarios which you treat as your executable specifications and uh, yeah and it's written in text of course on the second level uh, below there is an architecture our choice was uh, something called c4 model and for this we used also arc 42 templates all in Markdown in order to document our architectural uh, aspects of the design. And at the very bottom, at the unit detail design as code level, we used, as I said, test-driven development where uh, it is enforcing one to first think about the APIs of the unit one want to develop and also to think uh, about the stability of the system at the first place. So you are building in such a way quality into the, your software bottom up. And also when you build your code, you have some similar pipeline that will execute on the different levels for different architectures. But you will see here acceptance tests mentioned uh, uh, before are executed as one step, unit tests, integration steps. So these are the three levels defined by ASPICE. And at the end, documentation is generated and deployed at documentation server and become available immediately to the whole project team meaning it's up to date all the time. Or let's say, better to say, most majority of time. So uh, results and discussion. Uh, so as I said, this study uh, was performed for more than a year. 
And in order to make some comparison that will make sense, uh, well, what we did is we took some data on the project of the similar size and the same customer that was running uh, two years before, where they didn't conducted this kind of processes, but rather went in direction, let's first code, and then at the end, when it's demanded, we will write some docs. So opposite on, on choice that was performed uh, on this case study, and the, the results in quality are obvious. So the red bars represents legacy project def uh, defects being reported over months so from the ground from the ground zero so for when the project was launched until december and you can see this you can see this increase when the code base is uh, increasing and that's that's uh, let's say expectable but the the blue bars represents the case study we performed for documentation as code. And uh, in average, 35% fewer de defects were reported on average than in, in legacy projects. So two measures were taken usually when one is changing processes and tools and want to see how that uh, reflects in reality. Did we fix something? Did we make it more uh, efficient or, or even worse. So one is stability presented here. So how much defects you have re uh, reported every month or so, and uh, what is resolution time and so on. We didn't measure that, unfortunately. But the other one is the 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 uh, uh, flow. Uh, it's a it's a cumulative flow chart. So how much of a delivery one can expect from your feature teams? And this, uh, we took some, let's say, uh, overall measurements first uh, with here, you can see, you can get a hint at least uh, how much time teams spent in writing documentation as code. And as I already presented you, I hope you already got the picture. It's not only about documentation, but here, since we have designed processes in such a way that your acceptance test is part of documentation, your unit detail design is heavily dependent on writing unit tests and integration tests to validate your architecture. So it's all about testability of your system. And if you see these numbers that we had more than three and a half thousand commits over three months of development related to, to that, to, to testability of system, then you might understand a bit better uh, why this happened. So this decrease in defects numbers. And here, the, here we took a one let's say time window for one release uh, of three months during which we have delivered more than uh, 1,600 related artifacts to the documentation as code to a customer next to the source code. And uh, to conclude, let me point out some uh, important aspects. So documentation is code approach enhances the stability so the quality and the throughput yeah that was the term i was looking for <laughs> and so those are the two uh two terms and the two aspects of the system that you, you want to measure in order to uh, measure the quality of change and efficiency of change uh, of the process on the project or within the company. Also, as I already mentioned, documentation as code approach promotes the stability of the system as imperative 
employing behavior driven development and test driven development methodologies in its essence. And when you make this task of writing documentation or any task attractive and easy, uh, then what we have concluded and, you know, not conclude, but also empirically uh, uh, measured is that the teams will uh, write and keep those documentations, documents uh, in a much better shape than the opposite. And also what this paper uh, provides is also a practical guidelines how to achieve this approach. So this is a flavor, our flavor, how we did it, but you can do it on many other ways. That's also one of the strengths of, of this approach. It's, it's quite, it can be tailored to, to fit many other purposes. Uh, and also it's quite scalable because I didn't mention, but on this project, we had more than 200 peoples engaged, working uh, closely with each other. And what this approach heavily promotes is incremental and iterative approach where you are heading toward your goal uh, by adding small values at the time and then iteratively uh, refined the fine solutions. Thank you all for attention. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'm more than glad to answer. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Um, please questions, oh, one short question maybe. I have one short question, please. Uh, are the tools which you use for DAC all uh, free or are they, some of them are paid? They are, they are